terms of um, listening and transmitting ability off the full wave antenna versus the half wave is not that much of a difference. There is a difference. And uh, depending on what you're doing at your location, uh, height above ground and all that really makes a difference. But uh, yeah, I was, I was trying it out for a little bit. Uh, even tried out extended double zips and all that kind of stuff. But uh, you know, when you start uh, <clears throat> focusing your uh, uh, your your uh, uh, I guess the uh, signal off the antenna in two directions, when you're limiting uh, the antenna in two directions as well. So you know, there's a trade-off. And, uh, you know, one antenna I tried here on 75 that really worked uh, quite well. It's one I had tried on uh, 20 meters for uh, for slow scan TV, you know, to uh, prevent those, uh, what they call phase inversion dropouts. You know, I'd see, uh, when I was doing slow scan, I could see uh, dropouts uh, in the image. And uh, probably, uh, I, I put up a, a double bazooka on 20 to... Uh, Reduce the the amount of uh, uh, phase inversion, and uh, dang near wiped it out by doing that. It's just two cross dipoles, and uh, you feed them uh, 90 degrees out of phase with a uh, quarter wave uh, phasing harness. And uh, I put one of those dudes up for 75, and man, it worked good. Sure did. But. There again, you know, now you're talking the logistics of keeping uh, keeping that up in the air. And uh, much, much easier just to throw up standard uh, half-wave dipole and just run what you got. Uh, half-wave dipole seems to do a fairly decent job. But uh, about the only other antenna work uh, got going or uh, getting ready to do down here, uh, uh, I, I bolted one of the... Uh, it's called a Dominator 6. It's a 6 meter vertical 5 wave. It's a commercial uh, commercial antenna made for the uh, made for the amateur band and it's for 6 meters. And I've uh, been itching to uh, get the 6 meter band up and running uh, pretty good around here but uh, you know I've got a I've got a Yagi up and the Yagi just uh, it's only resonant in one part of the band, and that's it. You know, so you got a four megahertz uh, swath there, and uh, just a regular standard yard, you can't uh, turn, tune that uh, that entire swath. But uh, apparently, these um, Dominator six meter verticals uh, will tune that uh, that full stretch. So anyway, I got one on order, and uh, we'll uh, check and see if it'll come in. I was reading up on the uh, Eham reviews on the antenna and uh, nothing but great reviews uh, for that uh, six meter antenna so I ordered one so uh, I guess whenever all of this coronavirus uh, uh, crap is done with uh, uh, the folks up in Connecticut will go back to work and maybe they'll send me one out <laughs> Man, I tell you I, I think uh, I think everybody's getting uh, uh, pretty tired of this stuff, Perry. Uh, W3MMR from KD4UMU. November 4, Echo Delta Queen. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, Perry. There's Henry. Good morning, Henry. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people are getting getting tired of it, Dan. <clears throat> Sorry, I uh, <clears throat> was finishing my bite of bagel. Um, yeah, Dan, I think everybody's getting a little bit tired of it. <laughs> I mean, here, like in, in my city, it's like business as usual. Uh, people out everywhere. People have masks on, but that's about it. That's the only distancing they're doing. They're not distancing in store. I mean, it's just it's madhouse here. People got tired of it and gave up on it here, I guess. Um, good morning, Henry. Coming in fine here. Uh, decent signal. Band's quiet here for me this morning. Good, good conditions up uh, my way here this morning. Now, a uh, quick question, Dan, before I forget. You talk about phasing dropouts on slow scan TV on 20 meters. Now, when you say phasing dropouts, um, <clears throat> does that is that like from a selective fade? Like you're getting dropouts in the images from a selective fade in a certain type of antenna? Um, 
is kind of pre- 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 you know preventing those those selective fades like almost like a um, <clears throat> almost like a polarity shift you know like it going from vertical to horizontal and and back and forth and back and forth is that what you mean by that I'm interested I'm interested to learn a little more about that my with my limited knowledge uh, here and I uh, <clears throat> I'll tell you what, I'm running this 100 to 125 foot 600 ohm ladder line fed doublet. It's 125 feet of, of antenna in the air from the feed point. And uh, this antenna works fantastic here uh, with the balanced homebrew balanced down network tuner. It works fantastic on 40, works fantastic on 20. I've used it on 17. I've used it on 60 meters. I've used it on 160 meters. Excuse me, and I just can get, you know, all these bands on one antenna living in a postage stamp in the middle of the city and get out fairly well. So I have absolutely zero complaints. This is a W7F, W7FG, the openladderline.com or trueladderline.com antenna uh, that a few people run. I know Bruce uh, W2XR runs one. There's a whole bunch of people that run these antennas, and I, I've, I've really, really enjoyed it. It was worth every dime i could have made my own feed line and all that stuff but i just didn't have the time with work so i figured i'd pay the money uh, have a quality antenna that i know would work and be able to put it up in the air and i went from a half wave dipole coax fed dipole here on 75 meters to a uh to this antenna but the the, the half wave dipole was only up 30 feet this is up 65 so between switching to open wire feeder with less loss really no loss with the half wave dipole anyway but getting it up higher i think was really the big uh the big key so down to you henry what's going on down in blue ridge uh in four edq uh and send it back to dan katie for umu this is w3 mmr said to send it down my direction here so uh, yeah good morning to you Henry and uh, yeah, yeah you know uh, uh, sometimes uh, you know you got other projects or other things going on that put you put you uh, elsewhere than uh, than here on 75 uh, I did hear uh, your signal early one morning there on 40 meters uh, calling CQ but uh, uh, I, I was mobile and uh, I did try to uh, I did try to uh, answer you from the mobile, but uh, that conditions just weren't uh, favorable uh, that morning. And uh, yeah, I've been uh, like I was telling Perry, I've been working uh, some of the other bands, uh, you know, uh, working a little bit of 20 and quite a bit of 10 last night. I was enjoying some of the 10 meter band uh, openings that we've been getting. So uh, I guess we're uh, we're headed back on the upswing of the solar cycle. So. Uh, Next couple of years, uh, I think 22 is uh, is going to be the peak. So uh, you know we've got uh, we've got a couple of three years of uh, uh, of 10 meter activity to crank up. So uh, looking forward to that anyway. And uh, the FT2000 with the quadrature amp is sounding very strong over here. Uh, do you hear that guy? On the signal uh, coming in quite uh, yeah, that's quite well. That guy, I think Bruce. And, uh, KC1 uh, what I know about the uh, 
uh, the, the the fading on the uh, on the signals. Yeah, pretty much what happens if you have uh, two stations running half wave antennas, and uh, as the uh, one station is transmitting, of course, is the uh, signals refracting off of the atmosphere, and normally it will end up at your station down there horizontally polarized because he's transmitting on a whole, uh, horizontal polarized antenna. But sometimes the atmosphere kind of plays tricks on that signal and will change it to a vertically polarized signal when it gets to your location. Uh, there, uh, uh, there is where the uh, uh, the uh, turnstile antenna really shines because it will uh, reduce or eliminate those phase inversions uh, of the signals. So uh, it kind of helps out quite a bit. Now, um, it has slightly less gain that you would expect off of the half-wave dipole, but you know, you're reducing those phase inversions uh, quite a bit by doing that. So uh, that was uh, that was my experience uh, with those uh, uh, those uh, uh, turnstiles on the 20 meter band doing slow scan. You know because you're you're watching the image as it's scanning and you're receiving it, and uh, during those phase inversions you could see uh, just uh, swaths of white noise uh, in the image. And uh, when I put up my turnstile there on 20 meters, it, uh, it virtually eliminated that from happening. So, you know, it has its advantages for doing that. And I would think on AEM, uh, you know, well, I know it works better because I did put one up here on 75 and, uh, and ran it for a while. But uh, I took it down before the winter time hit, uh, just wanting to... Uh, configure some other antennas in the backyard here and uh, just went right back to the standard half-wave dipole but it does work well and uh, and I did set mine up uh, set it up flat top uh, to get that done so uh, that was the name of the game for for the turnstile antennas anyway back around to you there Perry uh, WF3 MMR in the group from TD4 UMD K4UMU in the group. W3MMR. Okay, real good, Dan. Oh, yeah, it makes, makes sense now. Okay. Kind of what I thought was going on. Sounds real interesting. I would like to get more into antenna building and, and experimenting with loops. And I would really like to try a loop here on 80. Uh, I don't have the room here, unfortunately. Well, I think I kind of have the room, but I don't have, like, the third tree, you know what I mean? Uh, to tie the one corner off to. Because it would kind of be more like a triangle as opposed to a, a circle, you know? But I don't know that much about them, so I, 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 th I think I've seen people set them up in triangles. I think, like, that's how Kevin's is, uh, GZQ, his 40-meter loop. It's kind <clears> of <throat> just t secured off on three sides there. Um, yeah, like I said, I have, I have two of the, two of the three, uh, trees. <laughs> the one tree is all the way on the far corner of the property, which is where the one leg of this is tied to. And the other tree is the center, uh, support for this antenna. And then that's pretty much it, uh, as far as the antenna trees are, are concerned here. Uh, but... Yeah, one day when we move and, and get, you know, into a more, you know, once I buy a place with some land and then uh, we'll be able to experiment. I'd love, with, I'd love to be able to try a beverage antenna at some point and, you know, phased verticals on 40 meters and uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff I'd love to do but just but just can't. But right now what I got it suffices and it works, seems to work well. Uh, I get out well here on 75 meters, which is where I do most of my talking. I uh, get out <clears throat> uh, well in the evenings, lo doing you know locally, you know up to the guys in New England and and so on and so forth, and then seem to get out well here in the mornings, uh, with a little distance uh, down to you guys. So I'm real uh, real happy with it. I'm real happy with the way the Henry amplifier is running. It was kind of a fiasco at first, real got, got real frustrating at points, but 
now that everything's fixed and squared away, I'm a happy camper. Uh, that's to say the least. Well, I got Harper on this morning. I got to grab some Tums here uh, during the next break. Uh, but, Dan, your signal's still holding up real solid. Henry, the FT2000 sounds good this morning. Uh, very solid signal. Both you and Dan are coming in very, very well uh, here this morning. And I wonder what you got planned down there this weekend in Blue Ridge, Georgia. Uh, uh, Georgia. Uh, Henry, um, Mr. Uh, entrepreneur, the man of 30 businesses. <laughs> Henry's got his hands in a little bit of everything. Heating and cooling. He's He's got... Uh, his hands in construction. He's got his hands in sign and vinyl siding, or excuse me, sign making. Uh, he had a, what a deli as well, Henry. On <laughs> uh, he, he's definitely an inspiration, my friend. Back down to you, N4EDQ down in Blue Ridge, Georgia. This is W3MMR in Philadelphia. W3MMR, N4EDQ, the group okay, very well.
Nation, which is uh, the website for that one. My friend built a beautiful website where the company is GeorgiaRefrigeration.com. Put that back together and uh, put a couple of guys on the road and anyhow these are some of my old customers that I had in Florida that are commercial accounts that uh, also have uh, had their businesses up, up here. I dealt with uh, down there I dealt with very few towns larger corporations a building by force from Colorado. So I'm, I'm contacting some of those, some of the dollar stores and uh, corporation stores, and uh, tell them that we're opening up here in the mountains. So there's nobody up here in the mountains doing it. But if they put the heck, 71 years old, I'm not uh, no more throwing in the mic. Anyway, so much for that. I got the coffee pot on. Uh, I think I'll come down there in a few minutes. Uh, Well, daggone, Henry. Uh, you mean you didn't uh, uh, apply for a stimulus boost there for your company? Uh, ha has the government kind of prop you up? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Uh, changing and switching with uh, uh, with how the, how, uh, how the country is running, uh, boy, that makes you a true entrepreneur. And... Uh, uh, able to uh, roll with the punches and 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 change and and uh, uh, still uh, still turn the buck uh, doing that uh, with the changes. That's a that's a true true American way there, Henry. And you got her uh, you got her covered. Seventy one still uh, still hitting it. Man, that's uh, that sounds great. It really does. And uh, uh, good. you know just uh, just good on you for that. Uh, I like that. Uh, I really like to hear those stories. So uh, anyway, yeah, yeah, real good. You know, if there's a there, if there's a need uh, uh, up in your area for that, and it's not there, the well, you know, you can step right on in and get her done. <laughs> and uh, uh, okay, on the 101 there on 40 meters. And uh, like I tell you, it sounded good from here. I mean, I can hear you fine. It's just uh, I didn't have enough sauce to uh, get a signal back at your direction. And uh, yeah, with the uh, uh, the 10 meter openings, that's uh, 11 year cycles. The sun goes through that 11 year cycle, but uh, you know, once it hits the peak, then it really starts dropping off quickly. And uh, there's not much uh, not much openings on the downside. Now on the upside, there are loads and loads of uh, sunspot activity, and the and the and you get the some great great conditions. You know, worldwide uh, conditions there on 10. And uh, yeah, I've been uh, I've been firing up uh, 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 you know antennas and everything else on the 10 meter band around here. And you know that was the exact reason I had put up uh, my log periodic. I had just a standard uh, standard Yagi up for 10. Uh, my dad had given me uh, you know when I got in from the military he had given me a. Uh, uh, it was a Wilson shooting star that he used on uh, uh, on 11 meters, you know, years and years ago. And uh, he gave me the entire time. It was uh, it was just laid in a in a pile uh, in, in his backyard there, you know. So I, I grabbed it up and I made a four element uh, mono band uh, 10 meter Yagi out of it. Shortened up the elements and. Uh, Got retuned and tuned it for uh, 28400, right in the middle of the uh, voice portion of the band. Well, you know that was the time I was uh, wanting to get on uh, AM a little bit, and and certainly uh, could not uh, do FM uh, up at 296, uh, you know, area because the SWR was just uh, was horrible uh, up there with that antenna. 
So uh, along came the uh, log periodic, and that was the exact reason I actually picked up the log periodic. You know, I could tune, uh, tune from the uh, CW portion of the band all the way up to what they're doing FM. You know, get the whole band in with a great SWR. And, uh, of course, you know, got the, a total of five bands on that antenna with a great SWR from the top of the band to the bottom of the band with no tuner. So, uh, you know, uh, just uh, loads and loads to like about the antenna. Um, I probably don't have it at the time I need to have it, but... You know, a minimum of 50 feet for ground effect, and, uh, uh, boy, I'll, I'll be lucky if it's up at uh, uh, 40 feet, so I don't have it as high as I had it before. Uh, when I put my new rotor in the tower up here, uh, I, I did not uh, go as high as I had gone before, and, uh, and, and I, I moved the, uh, the rotor plate down a couple of uh, spaces on the tower there, and... And so now the antenna's uh, a little bit shorter. Uh, I took out the, uh, I had one of those, uh, oh, what was it? Uh, it was just a, just a small motor. There we go. You get it, go look at it. It was a CDE, Charlie Delta Echo. Uh, rotor is what I had on the, uh, on the log periodic before. And of course, uh, it was one of those CD45 rotors that does not have a brake. So, uh, you know, that being the case, uh, well, when, you know, the wind would, even when it would just slightly blow up here, that, that antenna would just rip around wherever it wanted to go, you know. And, uh, and of course, you know, south was uh, where the stops was on the rotor. So the wind was just it was constantly banging uh, the rotor onto the stock. <laughs> one of the tail twister uh, rotors we put in it with the new control box. And, uh, now the antenna just stays exactly where I left it. So it, it, it doesn't move around and blow around in the wind like the old uh, CV-45 rotor did. But uh, uh, the problem I've got with it now is uh, the new the new tail twister uh, uh, doesn't give me an indication on the meter of where it's pointed. So uh, obviously uh, that uh, that wire wound resistor up there in the rotor itself uh, is having some type of an issue. But uh, uh, I haven't gone up and taken it down yet. I'm, I'm going to just uh, you know I can look out the back window and see where I'm pointed. It makes it a little tougher if you're going to sit and uh, try to uh, do a lot of constant turning, which I don't do. Uh, normally, I just stick in one direction and operate. You know, normally, I point it up to the northeast. Is where I usually keep it up over Europe. But uh, uh, with the 10 meter band uh, coming active, uh, you know, uh, of course, I had it swung up northwest yesterday talking to some guys in Montana. It hurt some guys down in South America initially. Uh, could hear them quite well. They're about an S3 signal, uh, somewhere uh, somewhere about 5,000 miles uh, down in South America. And uh, those guys were calling CQ, but uh, not a one of them could hear my signal from uh, from my location. And uh, it, you know, I had the antenna pretty much in center, left and right on their signal. And uh, even with uh, even with legal limit power on sideband, they still wouldn't be able to hear me. So hey, you never know what you're going to get. I think we had the, this what I call diode stint there. <laughs> it was only allowing it to uh, uh, come one direction and, and was not able to transmit back the other way the same path. So uh, sometimes uh, sometimes that happens. But. Uh, some of the interesting ones are, you know, when you point the, the antenna at someone and their signal goes away, you got to put the side, the broad side of the antenna to uh, the station you want to talk to, and then you can hear that warbly sound on their signal. That's where you get the best, uh, uh, best signal strength, and uh, that, that's uh, that's usually backscatter is what that is. And I've worked uh, quite a few backscatter type uh, signals there on the on the 10 meter band. So uh, you get some interesting conditions up there, that's for sure. 
Anyway, here she comes up there, Perry. Uh, still big signal down here at Two Shippersville, W3 MMR from KD4U and U. KD4GZQ, good morning. Hey, uh, I think I heard something. Somebody from way down, something way down there, Kevin or Dan. Damn it. Um, somebody, uh, G G Z G Z three or something. Somebody, uh, really, really weak. Uh, I don't know who it was. <laughs> Good morning, Kevin. Good morning to you, buddy. Big signal up this way. Great to hear you. I'll get it right over to you. Then you can turn it to Henry. Mr. N4, Echo Delta Queen, the entrepreneur of all entrepreneurs in Blue Ridge, Georgia. The man who's taken Blue Ridge, Georgia by storm. Uh, he's He owns everything in Blue Ridge. He owns the deli. He owns the local dentistry. He owns the heating and air conditioning. Uh, he owns the sign shop. He owns, uh, you know, roofing and remodeling company. He owns everything in Blue Ridge. He's got Blue Ridge in the palm of his hand, Kevin. <laughs> Good morning to you, Kev. Big signal. Great signals from everyone. Really great bad conditions here this morning. Uh, Kevin, just on the Anon with the Henry. Uh, 3KD and the normal setup here. Uh, the DX100 was on it on 75 meters here last night, which was nice to get back on that thing. And then I have it set up for 160 meters, which I thought I was going to be on this morning, but unfortunately 160 didn't work out for me this morning. Excuse me. Uh, she's talking about solar. What's it? Solar cycle 25, right? Is the next cycle. Uh, I've been watching. You know, I watched that Dr. Scove. Uh, Dr. T. You know, uh, uh, watch her her solar forecasts and stuff, which are always pretty interesting. And there's been a lot of new solar cycle 25 sunspots, so it looks like things are uh, things are starting to ramp up. Uh, whether we're still at the, the the bottom or just about to start the uptick up here, hopefully Solar Circle 25 begins soon. Uh, Dan, like you said, there's more propagation normally uh, uh, when the, when we're on the uh, kind of you know on, on the uptick as opposed to on the downtick uh, there. So let's hope uh, let's hope this next cycle is gangbusters. And I I, I did some 10 meter work. A few weeks back and work some uh, southern, uh, some South America stations, Dan. I have a four element uh, 10 meter Yagi, uh, Serio, a four element Yagi on 10 here. Just mounted on the roof on a tripod and it works good. Uh, I worked the guys down uh, down south with no problem and uh, was working uh, South America with it. So uh, I do need to put a new rotor up. I have, I have a brand new, uh, freshly rebuilt Ham 4 with a CDE control box that I have to put up uh, at some point, but uh, we haven't gotten to that point yet. So I won't keep it here. I'll send it down to you, Kevin. And Kevin, we're experiencing no carrier dropping problems at all. Been keyed up for three minutes, and the thing hasn't dropped a watt. So I think we fixed it. We fixed it, Henry. Uh, Henry, <laughs> back down to you, Kevin. KK4GZQ, and send it to your buddy in, uh, in Blue Ridge. This is W3MMR. Okay, Perry, W3MMR in the group, KK4GZQ. And, uh, let's see here, what's going on with my watt meter? Anyway, uh, good morning, Perry. I'll worry about that in a second here. And good morning, Dan, and good morning, Henry. And, uh, it, boy, it woke up this morning. It's uh, got to be, I haven't checked temperature, but it's got to be in the 30s. And uh, I'm on the 610 this morning with the, uh, let's see here. What in the world is going, uh-oh. I did, hang on just a second, guys. Not watching what I'm doing. I'm grabbing the wrong wrong controls here, guys. My filament voltage is just a little low. I'm on the 610 power supply. Let me get it up now. Right, man. Be there. We go. Anyway, uh, heard Dan talking about the uh, the Wilson shooting star. <laughs> that was the first beam I had as a kid, Dad. Uh, Dan. Dad. television rotor, uh, I think it was a channel master. <laughs> like you said, it, it, after a while it starts spinning around. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
up to a frequency is in use. Thank you. The models don't. I know that they had some ham hams and uh, ham fours. Ham fours are great rotor. And uh, then, of course, the, the big boy, the tail twister, like you talked about, that will handle just about anything. And then they've got some other models that are even bigger. But I don't know the, the model numbers of those, so you don't see many of those at all. Anyway, I've not even had a drink, a sip of coffee here, Henry. I think I first thing I'm talking about you. Uh, you might, he must be talking about you and your uh, things that you were going into refrigeration, maybe. Uh, something to do with refrigeration down there, Henry. But glad to hear you've got that off the ground and up and going. And no competition in the area. On to you, uh, and I'll try to do better on the next transmit here. Boy, I'm just all out of sorts, Henry. N480Q. Good morning. Take a 4 gz Yeah, KK4 GDQ and pretty good. Good morning, Kevin. Sound good over here, Kev. That's the like Ken's doing a great job. Yeah, cold this morning, Kevin. It's uh, 30, 31 degrees over here in the mountains. Things dropped down uh, yesterday and a little, little bit the day before, but uh, this is ridiculous weather. We go from the 80s down, back down to the 30s. And uh, uh, Dan, I bought one of those Max Gaines uh, push-up poles that I'm going to be using for my UHF, VHF, because I get into Tennessee real good from here in the Knoxville on the two meters. I run the 1 8 machine or the 375. And uh, I got the antenna hung up in a tree. And uh, that didn't do real good. I mean, it works, but then also when it rains, you know, the tree just <laughs> doesn't do real well. So I, I, I got that pole, but yesterday I went ahead and just uh, took the antenna back down from the trees. It was up about 50 feet, and I just stuck it up on my back deck. It's only, the railing's only about six foot off the ground, and I was full climbing into the, uh, the one inch machine in uh, Tennessee, which I think is maybe, maybe it's not that far away. It might be like maybe about an hour, hour and a half from my house, but uh, it was still was good. So. And uh, Kevin, uh, that Max Gain pole, let me tell you what happened to me. You know, they tell you to put those connectors, you know, you have to put those, those clamps on top of that thing and ship them separately. And uh, uh, they tell you just to put silicone on the bottom of it. Well, I put that silicone on. That silicone was not set up properly. I could pull that thing right off like nothing. Then when I did uh, a couple times, then I did it again. Stuck, uh, I saw it, so I split the pole back in, and then I tried to pull up that something will come off again. So I, I finally cleaned it all, all off, and that was a job. Uh, that was a real job cleaning that silicone off, but I got it all back off the fiberglass. And then I bought that JD, whatever that is, the JD glue, you mix the two together. And they're not coming off no more. That, that was another recommendation. They just said don't use it if you're going to drop it. If you're going to drop it on uh, on concrete or something. Well, I, I doubt I'll do that. The brakes are break. That's not the end of the world. But anyway, so uh, maybe today or maybe Monday sometime I'll be uh, putting that thing up. I got the 50 footer uh, there, Dan. Uh, and, uh, and uh, we'll. We'll see how that works. I don't think I'll go up 50 foot up. I'll work if I leave it where it is now in that spot. So we'll have to see. Uh, it doesn't make the 375 machine real good, and some of the local ones, it doesn't hit, so it must be uh, where I have it right now. So we'll see what happens with that. But anyway, yeah, we got the refrigerator company up off the running, and I uh, uh, just got to I gotta push it a little bit harder. Some, uh, they got the website up and running, and I gotta, I, I, I gotta hit the telephone a little bit to do that. So I've been busy with doing that, doing the yard work. Got my pot fixed again. Dan, I didn't know whether you knew this, but we had so much rain that the end of my pond blew out. 
and uh, everything just went down down the road into the creek. And that we have a creek going by too, but uh, that whole thing. So it looked like a good sinkhole over here for a while. Uh, we're out at the edge of the waterfall that goes down about 15 feet. The whole thing just busted right away. So uh, finally, you know, what was it, last Saturday, I believe we did it. I, uh, I read the skip here and a little uh, a track out, and uh, we went ahead and fixed that, put the pipe back in, got, got a couple loads of dirt, but not a pan pot back to normal. Now, while we were at it, we were dredging it. I took the track out and uh, I actually pulled the silt out of it to make it a little deeper. I saved only six fish. I had six coin fish left. Uh, the, the rest of them all were down the pipe. Hit the road, so there they go. We had about uh, originally had more than 400 of them. So uh, the ones that are in there are uh, still. I got four fish left. I'm sorry, four of them. Two of them I picked up. They were dead. So I, I think I picked them up with a little skisker. And uh, anyway, I uh, we dredged the thing and put the silt all the way around. Now he was gonna let it dry out and then. The uh, tractor with the blade and straighten that out with the stuff dry. It takes about, I think, two months to dry out, so maybe even a little more. So that was the pond project. Yeah, we had a lot of things going on all of a sudden here. And I got agitated, and uh, you know, uh, how that crap happens. Especially when you get old, you get fidgety, grumpy, and miserable. And I was one of those old coops that got miserable, grumpy, and fidgety. So uh, there she goes. <laughs> having my coffee, enjoying myself with you guys, and uh, we'll have to see what the rest of the bands do like later on. It's about, uh, let's see, I, I forgot today is Sunday. I, 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 I don't think the old military that's on today, but today's Mother's Day. And uh, let's see, today I think is uh, probably a block shop day for Florida or something like that. I don't know when those boys start. So, let me see if... Uh, if uh, Dan uh, copied all my jumble mumble here, KD4UMU from N4 EQ. Oh, yeah, Perry, you asked the question. He says, What else am I doing? Not a whole lot today. I'm going to keep my feet up and rest. So, man needs to have a little bit of rest so I don't get too worn or anything. KD4UMU, N4 EQ. <laughs> hey, that sounds like me over here, Henry. Man, a lot. But, uh, Boy, you know, hey, good you get you got uh, several projects there to uh, keep you busy, keep you entertained. That's for sure. I think you know uh, that, that idle time is uh, is probably the worst. So uh, as long as you got things uh, keeping you busy, that's pretty good. But uh, uh, I, I can see where the uh, the pond blowing out would be uh, extremely aggravating. But uh, I don't know uh, what the fix on something like that would be, uh, other than to. Uh, Maybe uh, maybe create a, a better uh, better spillway uh, for those times when uh, uh, you know when you get, when you got the heavy rain conditions so it doesn't uh, doesn't take you out uh, you know <laughs> but, uh, we had uh, my neighbor in behind me here Henry uh, of course you know we live up on a hill here and uh, he had spent uh, a couple of uh, years rebuilding this guy's uh, cat diesel uh, dozer and uh, the trade-off is going to be that uh, you know he just had to put the work in the guy bought all the parts but uh, he had burnt uh, burnt one of the pistons in that engine so he uh, yanked it uh, apart got it fixed got it back together and uh, the owner of the uh, the owner of the uh, uh, <clears throat> of this dozer was going to uh, digging a, a pond uh, back on his property hill. You know, like saying we're up on the hill here, and he's going to do it down in one of the, uh, you know, where it starts like a stream over the edge of the hill there. So he takes all this dirt and pushes it up into, uh, uh, creates a dam, and uh, really never, uh, really never got the uh, spillway uh, completely fixed, you know. And as soon as he put it up, Man, we had a torrential rain up here. Of course, the thing filled up, and all of that water weight against that loose dirt. Uh, of course, it just opened up and uh, opened up and pushed uh, 
uh, pushed a, a, a big part of that dam over the hill. So uh, I'm sure the creek down below was running uh, quite deep uh, when that happened. Uh, you know, it's probably running deep anyway, but uh, even quite uh, quite worse with all that water going down. But um, he, he just had just a small uh, small spot uh, down in the bottom, and uh, that's pretty much his pond now. So it's uh, you know he, he still hasn't uh, he still hasn't gone down to uh, uh, to fix that or anything uh, as of yet, but. Uh, yeah, that was one of the things. He, he didn't have a spillway uh, uh, set, and it spilled right over the center portion of the dam, and it just took it out. But anyway, uh, when the guy was back there uh, pushing the dirt off, he actually got down to uh, the limestone and, uh, and had a, an exposed, uh, exposed stone in the bottom of this pond area. Um, and, and now when we have those... Uh, uh, you know, really energized lightning storms that come through. Uh, that limestone that has been exposed back there, that water sitting on it like that, it always takes a lightning strike. So, uh, you know, the best ground gets the strike, I guess. So, <laughs> I'd much rather have it hitting back there than up here on my property. So, uh, that's how it all turned out. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've seen, uh, even at my brother-in-law's uh, place, um, you know, a few ridges over. He lives on top of uh, one of the ridges uh, down south of me here, and uh, he's uh, his house was built uh, on top of the ridge up there, and uh, they actually had to dig into uh, the stone to get the uh, basement area on the house so dug out, and it's just exposed uh, exposed stone all around the back side of the house, and uh, those trees that uh, kind of uh, uh, kind of squeaking their way up through the rocks there. Uh, without fail, will take lightning strikes, and uh, you know you can see where it's, just, it's taken out as a direct TV, and uh, you know just the, that being uh, lightning strikes that close. Had never hit the house yet, but uh, the trees, uh, the trees into that uh, stone always take uh, lightning strikes. So uh, he was wanting to get back into ham radio and uh, wanted me to help him. I said, well, I said the, the first and foremost thing we're going to do is we're going to create one heck of a ground system. I said, because you're going to need it here. <laughs> and the unfortunate thing was we couldn't go very deep with ground rods. We had to, we had to uh, slide them in at an angle, you know, because we kept hitting that uh, back on rock up there. But uh, we, we did it. We finally got it all put together. So uh, hopefully, if you ever take the strike on the antenna up there, it'll uh, it'll just direct it all to ground. So uh, and and not uh, not come in the shack there. Anyway, uh, 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 big uh, big signal over here, Henry. Man, I tell you, just doing a, a absolute great job. And uh, and uh, of course, Kevin, he's he's plowing the signal over here this morning. So uh, thought that was kind of funny. Uh, uh, Perry up there uh, uh, acting like he couldn't barely hear a Kevin signal. <laughs> uh, I teed up real quick now. Told Kevin, I said, uh, I think he's kidding. He goes, <laughs> Kevin said, I hope so. <laughs> but then all that, uh, that 610 is poking out of signal this morning. You ain't got to worry about that. And uh, Perry, uh, all rotors, uh, I don't know, I think maybe the uh, uh, the, the top, uh, top shelf rotors that... Uh, People are putting up on the, turning these monster towers uh, with multiple uh, multiple uh, antenna stacks and all that. I think they were using the what was it called a, a prop prop rotor prop rotor. Uh, you know those things you could uh, you can set a house on it and turn it. You know so uh, uh, just a, just monster monster rotors. The biggest one I ever got to use was um, on the military's. Uh, uh, log periodic they had uh, down in New Mexico there. Man, that dude was set on a. It, it looked like a four by four box, and the uh, the electric motor, rotors, and chains, and all that was housed in that uh, in that box, and and turned that massive monster uh, 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 log periodic antenna they had. You know that's 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 what got me thinking on the log periodic uh, when I couldn't get. Uh, uh, you know, uh, good coverage on the 10 meter band uh, was uh, thinking back about that military long periodic. So, looked it up, found the commercial uh, ham radio job uh, that would work, and uh, 
bought one and stuck it up and uh, just took to death with it. Anyway, uh, Kevin, here she comes, KK4GZQ. Uh, she still got a signal on Shepherdsville over here. <laughs> KD4UMU. Perry, he's, he's pegging the S meter. I mean, all the way against the wall. It's uh, Go ahead, Perry. And I think Perry turned it to me and I think it went down to Henry. Yeah, well, all you guys are, are doing real good up here. Dan, you've been solid 25 over the entire time. I mean, absolutely solid. Um, and I'm... I, what, amp, what? You say you're on the Commander Amplifier? Uh, well, I want to know, know which model that is, which, uh... And what tubes are in it, because... You know, you... And, you know, I, I like listening to old buzzards. You know, I, I do. I like listening to long transmissions. And you make some long ones, Dan. And I, I'm just curious that, you know, I'm, and what power level you're running. Because that thing just, you, I think it's got to have some nice cooling in it, you know. Because th this 3CX1200 gets hot, you know. But that's, I'm feeling the exhaust temp, you know, right out of the top of the cabinet. And it's, you know, an inch from the top of the tube. And, uh, you know, there's a chimney blowing all that that air directly right off basically the anode of the of the tube and I never had a ceramic tube amplifier before so I was just wondering if you know they I, I'm pretty sure they just run hot you know they're a little, a little different than glass tubes so in my inexperience uh, but Dan great signal and uh, no I'm hearing Kevin great Dan <laughs> Kevin's good, a uh, good, good 15 to 20 over as well, and that <clears throat> the audio of that thing just just cuts right through, uh, you know, and it's very pleasurable to listen to. Kevin, you always do a good job with the audio, and Henry, yeah, congrats on the refrigeration business and and uh, <clears throat> the HVAC business. I know there's a lot of money in that. Uh, there's also a lot of competition. I know there's a lot of different HVAC companies around, but if you could corner the market in your area there, I mean, that would be that would be absolutely perfect. It sounds like you are, so uh, that's awesome. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, I was going to ask you how you made out with the pond, Henry. I remember you mentioned something about that a few weeks back. Um, yeah, Dan, this, this rotor I got for free. This ham four and just it had been sitting and uh came with the mast mount you know the pipe mount underneath of it and i just rebuilt it and then i got a free uh uh eight wire uh, cde control box for it got that for free so i call it it's, it's the junkyard rotor uh because i got it for free and it had been sitting for a long time and now it works perfectly i just i rebuilt the whole thing painted it and uh just had just haven't uh you know had a chance to put it up yet uh, nor really the knee because I don't use a 10 meter Yagi much, but I got a that rotor's messed up It only points a certain way and I got to trim a tree around the Yagi too It's like stuck pointed southwest right now. So that's kind of in the right position anyway, so it doesn't really matter It's kind of where it needs to be Anyway back down to you Kev. Let's see how I'm holding up down in uh down in Lexington this morning And I love it now that this amplifier runs correctly <laughs> Kevin Oh my god, what a relief. KK4GZQ in the group W3MMR. Okay, Perry. W3MMR in the group. KK4GZQ. Still not able to get my. 1, 2, 3. Bird 43 working here. I don't know what's going on. Maybe the battery is dead in it. Decreasing size. Something's going on here. Showing full output on my internal metering on my uh, MT3000A, but I'm not showing. Well, you guys know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm hitting on the top of this 43, but nonetheless, uh, she's not coming to life here. I'll have to work with that. I think I've got a dead battery in there. Anyway, uh, I'll worry about that later. Let's see here. I reached over here and grabbed my modulator bias on that last over instead of my filament voltage. And I think I'm about where I need to be there. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. I'm just making a couple of adjustments. And let's get the filament voltage where it needs to be right here at... Uh, Right at about 5 volts AC here. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, real good on all everything. Dan, that's pretty amazing. 
what you were talking about with the trees and the and the rocks and everything up there taking the uh, lightning strikes. And uh, used to do a, little, a lot of cell tower uh, groundwork where we were in the same situations, and that's what they told us that drive them sideways if you have to. <laughs>
for that stuff. And uh, we had some clay in there, but I think the guy that did it for me, I had to replace that pipe about 18 months ago, and I put in a, 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 an 18, 20-inch uh, 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 plastic pipe and took the old metal one out, but they didn't do it right. I mean, uh, I, I, I guess I should have watched them while they, did, were, were, while they were doing it, but we were in the middle of a huge remodel, and I just took for granted they knew what the heck they were doing. And, uh, man, you, you know, I'm just glad they're not around because I've, after working on this thing myself with a buddy of mine, both of us felt like shooting the guy. I mean, they just they just didn't build it right. So, yeah, we brought in a couple loads of clay, some two loads of uh, regular dirt on top of that, built it up, and then on the outlet side where the pipe is, we even put some uh, heavy boulders. You know, we got a lot of rock. You know, we live on Rocky Road, and uh, there's a lot of huge, I mean, huge boulders probably as, that probably weigh four or five hundred pounds or more. So we picked them up with a traco. And then when I built that, uh, when we we put the pipe back in, put the clay around it, we put the rock up against the uh, pipe on each side and and like down below it. So if it if it fills up, it doesn't. Uh, wash it out again. It kind of hits that and makes like a little seawall there. And uh, I even thought about putting a breaker wall in there. But then, uh, Dan, you mentioned the spillway. We did. About halfway down the pond, since I used all that silt that I pulled out and raised up the sides of it, we actually uh, left the portion of it open. So now when it comes up, It'll go out that spillway. Then I made a trench a a along the side of that uh, of that piece of property all the way down, and made a trench so it'll run out there, and then it'll go down another path, and it'll it'll go past the waterfall on the side, and go down back into the creek also. So uh, we shouldn't have no more washout, but uh, so much for that. Now, let me see. Dan made a comment before about stimulus. You know, <laughs> I had a laugh. Uh, you know, uh, if I had a lot of employees, I probably would have filed for it because I think we would have gotten it. But let me tell you guys, I heard a lot, a lot of guys. Now, this is a stimulus now that I'm talking about right now. It's for the company. I heard a lot of guys talk about that, and they got it, and they didn't use it. And matter of fact, uh, they, you know, that particular stimulus was supposed to be made for the uh, salary for employees. Well, uh, I know a guy that he paid his employees and he's trying to take the money back from the stimulus, and now he's having problems taking the money back. They're really controlling that thing. I mean, it's the strangest thing I've ever read. And then they, then another fellow told me that uh, he used it, and then he read in the fine print that uh, uh, depending what, how he did it, he has to pay it back. So the other company that I'm licensing in Florida, they're not, uh, they didn't take it. But talk about the stimulus, Dan, I was surprised that uh, I got $1,200. So did my wife, but I guess everybody got that. That's on Social Security, and, and, and I'm sure you guys probably got it also. But uh, uh, a lot of them got a direct uh, deposit, it, and we, Holly and I, we got a check in the mail. So uh, uh, I almost told you, yeah, what is this? And then I really read it, what it was. I said, wow, I didn't think we'd get it, but uh, sure enough, we did. So. Uh, that did help with the pond work anyway. <laughs> it paid for the equipment that I rented. So uh, it came in handy. That was good. And let me see, what else was I going to say? Yeah, Kevin, you're banging in your, 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 as they say, wall to wall. You got my needle pegged practically most of the time, and so does Dan. And Perry, your last transmission, you were 25 over. And let's see, I made a couple of notes, the spillway, the stimulus, the J.D. Wells, yeah, that stuff is from Wells. Uh, and, 
Oh, yeah, your tower leg. Very good. Uh, I'm assuming the way it sounded is like you're just drilling three holes for the tower. Uh, or is this a larger tower, like a, like a cell tower bottom, where you have to make three large holes and then set on top of it? Uh, uh, what I did with mine, with my Roan 25 that I have the beam on, we just dig a, we, we dug a big hole about uh, uh, four foot by four foot, and uh, matter of fact, I, I, I used a traco to do that. But uh, when we dug that, and I, I didn't have a base, so what I did is I just took about uh, four foot of power, set it right down the middle, level it out, and that's where we poured the concrete around it. And uh, once I got it down low enough, we uh, we built a little form up on top so it looks nice and neat and square, and then uh, then my yard is going around that, but uh, it sounds like you're making three holes and sticking the tower in that way, but anyway, it all sounds good. Uh, let's see, yeah, we don't do any, uh, Perry, we don't do air conditioning anymore. Or I, uh, believe it or not, I, you know, the air conditioning company I own in Florida for, I don't know, what, 40 some years, 47 years, uh, I, I did it because we had to do air conditioning. I don't like doing air conditioning work. It's repetitious. It's like you do the same old crap every day. You, you, you know, you diagnose the air conditioning unit with nothing to it. And they only got a, like a circuit board relays and maybe an expansion valve or a solid or uh or shoot it's a long one boys in my life that, uh, that i did and then you do your duck work and i hate climbing through attic and doing duck work I used to do that too with the guys until i had a crew but then uh but the boys down in Florida that are licensing them, that's all they do. They do the appliances and the air conditioning. And so when I sold the appliance store with the air conditioning company, I said, that's it. But uh, myself, I actually used to do a lot, a lot of supermarket refrigeration, walk-in coolers, showcases, display cases, and stuff like that. And uh, they're more challenging. They're, uh, every job is different. You can't pre-diagnose it until you get there. They call you up on the air conditioning. You almost know when you get there what it is, and uh, it, it's like it, you, you do it in your sleep. You just dream about it, and I don't want to dream about that stuff no more. <laughs> anyway, the back he comes to uh, Chester, PA, WBMMR, and for EDQ. Okay, does it come to me or does it go to Dan and then me? Uh, I think I was sending it to you, Perry, wasn't I? Yeah, it goes to you, and then it comes to me. W3 MMR. You might have been a braking station, too, guys. Okay, well, let's bring them in. Braking station, uh, go ahead and throw your call out there. Nothing hot, Dan. It was between Henry and I, over. Oh, okay, yeah, good deal. Well, you know, the Florida AM uh, guys are going to get in here uh, Sunday morning, and uh, they usually fire up there at uh, uh, 0630 Eastern Standard Time. So another 15 minutes off, so uh, we'll keep that, uh, keep that in mind. And uh, <clears throat> uh, let's see, uh, Harry asking about the amplifier. Um, it's a Perry. It's a um, it's, it's got the metal ceramic tubes in it. The uh, 3CX800 has a uh, matched pair of those, and uh, the amplifier is a uh, Command Technologies HF2500. Uh, they are out there. Quite a few still in uh, still in operation, and uh, uh, this thing has an unlimited uh, unlimited key down. So uh, at, at 1,500 watts. Uh, no less. So, uh, you know, that being the case, uh, uh, the transformer is heavy duty enough to supply enough uh, current to the tubes to keep them happy uh, with that drop-offs. 
So uh, I can sit here and run uh, Mega Limit AEM on this thing uh, all day long. Uh, you know, at uh, right in about 375 watt carrier, and uh, it does just fine. It puts out just a little bit of heat uh, while it's sitting there idle, and it, it just barely, uh, barely, barely won't warm air coming out of it. But uh, when you when you hammer it down and, and uh, start transmitting, it really starts uh, poking the heat out of it. It's got one of the squirrel cage blower fans in it that that blows uh, air past the uh, uh, the metal fins on the tubes. So uh, a pretty pretty efficient amplifier. Uh, yeah, I picked this one up in uh, Ohio. A guy up there uh, had a uh, tornado run across his place and. Tore his uh, place up, and uh, all of the insurance money that he had was uh, had gone towards fixing his house. And but he did not get his barn fixed, and his wife was uh, was on him about getting the barn fixed, and uh, uh, he needed he could get just enough out of the amplifier to get his barn fixed. So I went and bought his amplifier, brother, and uh, I just about had to. Uh, just about had to uh, pry his fingers off the amplifier. He did not really want to let it go, <laughs> but uh, but he did. And uh, matter of fact, he gave me uh, he had a he had one of the uh, blue covers made for it, and it's got the uh, company's logo uh, embroidered in the front, the whole nine yards. So uh, it was tickled to death to get it. And uh, I've been using it for a bunch of years, and uh, and it just it just works. It just does what it's supposed to do. So uh, the old metal uh, metal ceramic tube uh, amplifier is uh, uh, not too bad. So uh, that's what we got here. And uh, they say this thing would put out, you know, if you drove it hard hard enough, it it put out 2,500 watts. But uh, uh, we got it sitting here uh, just kissing uh, uh, 1,500 watts on peak and uh, right about 375 on carrier. So uh, that's that's where we're at. And uh, like I say she'll she'll run all day just just like this. And uh, let's see, uh, that's about all the all the notes I had there. So uh, we'll keep it long and uh, we'll uh, we'll let it uh, we'll let it run around uh, again here and uh, uh, just keep uh, keep the Florida guys in mind down there. So uh, they are coming up here uh, less than 15 minutes. Uh, so uh, here here she comes. W3 MMR in the group. From KD4 UMU. KD4 UMU. In the group W3 MMR. Real good, Dan. Well, real solid copy on everybody still. All right, it's starting to get a little light out, and we'll keep the uh, the net in mind there. Just a few quick comments. I, mean, I didn't even hear you mention JB Weld. I use JB Weld. I use JB Quick. There's JB Weld and JB Quick. JB Quick is just about as strong as as normal JB Weld, but it only takes about you know 10 minutes to set up, 15 minutes to you know to really harden up. And uh, I use that stuff a lot at work because taking cars apart. Older cars apart, man. You know, uh, you know, and and, and play. Plastic gets real brittle from the heat and the uh, the temperature extremes, you know, under the hood of a car. Um, so things break, and I use that stuff to glue stuff back together all the time. And I have like I probably have six tubes of it here in the shack. <laughs> I use it to uh, to mount the inductors for my tuner <laughs> uh, on the onto the piece of wood. Um, so yeah, J, uh, JB Quick is a uh, a staple in my uh, uh, household. <clears throat> Kevin, good de good deal on the tower. I didn't even know you're putting up it on the tower. That's awesome. So good for you on that. Um, and this amplifier, uh, you know, I'm it's, it's just it's new to me. You know, I had I had a, f a few little issues, you know, in the beginning. So I'm just still trying to, you know, get my feet wet with it here while it's running correctly you know and uh <clears throat> just wondering you know how much heat you know is supposed to come out of these things and and uh so it seems like they run they're, they're supposed to run pretty warm uh, i just wonder how uh how long i could take it you know what i mean but i mean the inside of this amplifier is built like a tank i mean this amplifier is built like a tank and these are rare kevin they only made these for two years with this tube this desktop configuration they made it from 96 to 98 
and to find this 3KD Classic uh, 3CX 1200D7 desktop uh, <clears throat> of model, it's it's almost impossible to find information on it. It was hard enough finding to find a manual for the thing. Um, so yeah, it's and it's it's super clean, uh, you know, cosmetically, and uh, and then the inside is 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 pretty is pretty much immaculate. The tube's brand new, brand new iMac tube. And, um, I think, you know, now it's just working. You know, I think it sat for, for quite some time, uh, there. But it just seems to work now, and I, I, I got, I really, like, it enhanced the cooling and helped the exhaust and mounted it, you know, you know, uh, have it sitting under the desk over there in its own little cabinet, and, and, uh, got, you know, uh, air intakes coming through the back of the desk and exhausting the heat out the bottom, got a duct fan in there, and, uh, so really tried to help things out. I'm not having any any type drop offs or or anything like that. So I'm 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 becoming very very happy with this thing, and hopefully it'll last me quite some time. And if not, I got the AL80B here, that little amplifier. I'll, I'll never get rid of that thing. So we'll keep it moving. Back down to you, Kevin. Uh, I think that's all I got. Yeah, KK4GZQ W3MR. Just dragging my feet there just a little bit to see if uh, anybody else might be out there. W3MMR with group. KK4GZQ still trying to mess with this Bird 43 here to figure out why I'm not showing any output on it. Anyway, get it figured out here shortly. There. Anyway, um, Dan talking about the uh, pair of uh, 3CX 800s, I think they are, and the Commander 2500 with that great big plate transformer in it. I looked at one really hard at Dayton. I guess that was last year. And uh, I was really uh, getting close with the guy, and then I, I, I went ahead and got, came to my senses, Dan, like I needed to know. But what a, what a heck of a, a great build on that particular amplifier. And same with yours, uh, Perry. That's a... That thing ought to be here for years and years to come, the Henry, and the, of course the Commander. Anyway, um, and Henry, uh, you and Perry talking about the J.B. Weld, I'd say Perry has probably had plenty of experience with that stuff, seeing some of the stuff that he does with automotive and whatever else. And uh, I, I don't know if I've used the JB quick, but it would be nice to, like you said, uh, have it set up quick and where you can start moving on or sanding it or whatever you need to do. Uh, that stuff is amazing, though. Sure enough. Anyway, uh, Henry, keeping a, a look at the uh, time here, uh, 6.30 for the pre-net. Let me go ahead and get it all around to you and um, see if anybody else uh, is going to show up here. Uh, M480Q with the group. Uh, oh, and the uh, tower, guys, is uh, going to be a, uh, about a 60-foot uh, uh, fold-over. It's going to have a, it's got a hinge base on it, and uh, it's going to provide the third leg for uh, either, either a 75-meter uh, delta loop or uh, I'm looking at some other 160 meter loops here online, but it looks like people basically, as long as they can get the length and the wire, they're trying about any shape that you can get it out there. So who knows? I may still not give up on the 160 meter length here. There's some other things I can do. Uh, down to you, Henry, N480Q. Here's KK4GZQ near Lexington. Good morning.
cut now. We need to bring some LMR to that LMR 400, about 150 feet. I think it has to be about 1.2, 1.3, but that's not too bad. Not too much of a long there. All right, fellas, you guys have a great day. They will probably get me one day next week. I know it's not going to be Monday. And uh, we'll try to be in here maybe Tuesday or Wednesday and see what happens. Uh, take care. We'll do it again. Let's see. I'm going to give it to Dan, 84 UFU, before I do this thing. Very good, yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, Henry, that's exactly what I did. Uh, uh, the, the, the width of the garage is 24 feet wide, and I actually cordoned off two 12 by 12 areas, and uh, one one is a uh, washer dryer room with uh, just a small bathroom uh, cordoned off in there, uh, just a you know commode and a sink, and that's it. And uh, and and the ham shack here, right in the corner of the garage. So uh, yeah, it worked out pretty good. Uh, the back wall wasn't uh, finished out uh, when I when I started building it, so uh, I got to install the wa uh, the the box in the wall for the antennas, uh, uh, you know, the feed lines to come into and all that. So uh, yeah, it works out pretty good, and I really like the uh, really like the setup here. But not very big, so uh, obviously I couldn't put uh, uh, anything big in the room here. So uh, uh, with the flex and the commander amplifier here and. Uh, the old vintage stuff on the other side of the room just spin around and I could operate on the other station there, so uh, uh, not very big at all. Anyway, uh, coming up uh, on uh, the bottom of the map, 73 as well, and uh, we'll send it around to Perry there for the 73. And uh, uh, yeah, when you guys get done, uh, looks like Murray uh, N4GUI is uh, net control for the Florida AM group this morning. So uh, when you guys clear out, uh, send it down there to Murray. Uh, we get three MMR in the group from KD4UMU73. Yeah, all right, Dan. KD4UMU in the group. W3MMR. Well, uh, great copy. I mean, really great conditions uh, this morning. Great talking to you fellas. Real uh, nice QSO uh, here this morning. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this uh, stuff over here sounds all right. You guys sound great this morning. So thanks for all the information on the amplifier there. Dan, Kevin, best of luck with the, uh, the tower and everything uh, today. Don't work too hard. Well, you've been working your butt off, man. I think we all have uh and i'm thankful to be working that's for sure henry best of luck on the hvac adventures um i'm sure you'll do just fine with it um and go out and buy jb quick jb quick jb quick folks this stuff is great stuff <laughs> i should put sponsored by jb quick on my youtube channel <laughs> i use that stuff so much seven three guys and back down to uh, you, Kevin. Uh, KK4GZQ, uh, 73 Henry, uh, Dan, Kevin. We'll catch you guys later. W3MMR. Good to talk to you and Henry and Dan. Good to you so this morning. Real good round table. Enjoyed it with you guys. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to get out here uh, a little bit more today. Uh, 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 Perry and uh, got uh, a buddy of mine coming back down from Lexington to help me. And uh, we, we got two foot down on one hole, Perry, and hit limestone. And, I mean, it was rock solid. I had to move the hole, so we, we wasted about an hour digging and then move to another hole. So well, I think we're far enough down on this one now that uh, 
uh, we, we can, uh, as long as we get some of the rock out of there, well, there's just tons of limestone in the ground down here. Anyway, same thing for now, and uh, we'll keep working at it and playing around and enjoying uh, uh, the QSO with you guys this morning. So, Marty, if you're listening, I'm going to send it down to you in 4 GUI with the uh, 4 AM pre net. Good morning, this is KK4 GZQ. The other, the other person is it's Fauci, and it's the director of the CDC. It's another one that's uh, that's uh, quarantined now, and uh, two administration officials. So uh, uh, the FDA director, and the CDC director. SDR. Go ahead, it's a breaker. Hey, you sound good here in New Jersey. I'm near Atlantic City, 40 miles west of Atlantic City. W2 SDR. Yeah, I, I saw your uh, tour. That's good. Yeah, N4WC. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I, I love it. I love it. You're my favorite guy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, get a report from the other guys down south. See how you're doing down there. Okay, KC9 with the Indian, Northern Wisconsin, Sea Lake, and my wife and I are home from the other. Readability about one or two here, and all I can just tell is a rumble. Yeah. Yeah, very weak here. Oh, well, close to the gods of propagation. Is your name Mark? It is Frank. The name is Mark. Hi, Mark. Nice to meet you. You are 704 miles from me, according to QR. Did it really look like that picture? Yeah, that's me when I plug something into the wall. I don't bother with all Peter. Yeah, it reminds me of that Christmas vacation movie. Yeah. Here you go. Well, I got you in the log here. Okay. Interesting, Frank, about the map. I just know, you know, there's a lot of things that make me scratch my head. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, you, you look at different things and you wonder, well, why is it like that? I, I don't I don't get it. Well, I'll tell you what. 
If you haven't looked at a website called Intellihub, take a look over there. You can have some interesting ideas of what this is all about. I think it's uh, Intellihub, well, that's just part of what I don't understand. I, I, I'm looking for an explanation if somebody's got a good one. And it's like these small businesses, like boutiques, little clothing stores, stuff like that. They're not allowed to be open. And yet Target's allowed to be open. So people are walking out of Target with all kinds of clothes. But Oshmo down the street just got a nice little clothing store. Can't be opened. I, I, what's the what's the rationale there? I don't I don't get it. I don't think this thing is ever going to go. Well, anyway, the other guys aren't hearing you real good, Mark, so I don't want to monopolize it here. So thanks for checking in and uh, have a great day and be careful. Be barefoot. Yeah, yeah, how much power are you running, Mark? One of the other fellows is asking. Okay, he's running a 200 watts or a Heathkit SB1000 amp, but, but he's having some RF issues, audio, so he has it cranked back. That's, that's the history of Brian. Okay, that makes sense then. I just heard Ernie. Are you there? Are you up yonder? I'll carry on, Frank, with uh, the mark there. That's okay, I signed with him and... Morning to uh, morning to Ernie and Mark. Uh, have a great day, seven three. Nice meeting you. Come on back. Okay, bye bye. Go ahead, uh, Ernie. Morning. He's in Wisconsin. That's only a hundred miles from you. He said seven hundred. Oh, that makes more sense. It's 704. Let's say, damn, my geography's way off. Yeah. He sounded like that guy from Jamaica. All lows, no, nothing else. Well, you sound a little different this morning. Yeah, I used to break in here all the time. He'd come in here and he had his hi-fi deal on it. He had all of his, all of his uh, RF was in from zero to 500 cycles. Oh, you mean 6Y5 Tango Radio? Yeah, yeah. Or, uh, or J69 Bravo. I don't know. He was a native, but I think he lived in Jamaica. He was expatriate English or something. I don't know. Never, we don't hear J uh, J69 Bravo anymore, do we? Dude, that was Bernard, right? Yep. But that's not Jamaica. That's uh, St. Lucia, I think. Forgot all about that guy. Yeah, he was a regular. Let me look him up in the log. See, last time uh, he was on here. He's 69, bro. That's a cool call. Yeah, it is. All right, the last time I worked him, Brian, believe it or not, was September of 2012. Wow, eight years ago. And that was on 40 meters, too. I was up on 7140, so long time ago. Yeah, he faded out. Never heard Donald in a while, either. I mean, maybe on a, a virus lockdown or something. Yeah, he's probably working 24 hours a day. Uh, good morning, K4U. Yeah. I talked to him Mo, a couple of months ago. And yeah, I did too. He rebuilt the engine in his truck. Morning, Jay. He's quite busy. Hey, there's, uh, there's Kidney Stone Dave. Mr. Stone. When you're through with all that, can, can I have your drugs? <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure, right, why not? I got dibs. Oh, 
How they're going to push it? They're going to put you in water with and blast it with RF. Uh, winners are going to go in with a uh, little mechanical uh, something and uh, blast the thing apart and pull it out piece by piece. Oh, God. Oh, man, that makes me... Ah. How do they get in there, uh, Dave? Uh, I have no idea. They use a shovel. Oh boy, hey Joe! Before I forget, my son just texted me and wanted me to say hello to to you and everybody else. Uh, good morning and uh, hello, Stan. Hello, oh, Perry. Hello, W4WMT. And good morning to all from KC4 Golf Lima. Hello. Good morning, Perry. Glad. In case any any of you out there identify as mothers, happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Where's Garrett? He's a mother. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Stan, did that link ever work? Uh yes, Dave. What's, uh, what's that, Ernie? Oh, okay. Yeah, he doesn't like it when you, uh... Yeah, I jump ahead of you. Yeah, I ended up, uh... I printed it, Dave. Okay. The back of that manual kind of looks like a K4, didn't it? Yeah. Uh-huh. Be a 2SDR. PC4G. W5JI, static is 20 over. W5JI, have a good one. Yeah, you started the sprinkler. That made it rain really hard, didn't it? M4WC. No, I didn't start the sprinkler because it's raining slowly. Oh, okay, and the sprinkler rains fast. Yeah, all these freeze warnings here, man. Everybody's out. I had to cover all their stuff up. It's 41 degrees. It's just like this virus. Better safe than sorry. That's cool here, Ernie. 39. I'm glad I put an extra blanket on the bed last night. I think this would have been the latest frost here in what they said like seven years. Yeah. They're calling it a polar vortex. <laughs> gotta name it, man. They gotta name it. Oh, yeah. Fred. Yeah, the Weather Channel, you know, they got to do all that. They got to be politically correct. Yeah, it's, it's really annoying. I think I can say with impunity, I haven't watched any news or any weather on TV in a week. And I didn't even know that Dr. Fauci was uh, had the virus. He doesn't have it. They say he's exposed to it. He's voluntarily self-quarantining, but he's going to go to a uh, Senate hearing on Tuesday under modified quarantine rules. Whatever the hell that is. He's going to be sitting there at the, at the table all by himself. And if it wasn't so sad for all the people being lost, man. I hope he sneezes on the Democrats. Yes. And Sam's had great roses for fourteen ninety nine. I mean, long stem, beautiful roses. Probably came from China, though. Yeah. Coronavirus.
Another delivery system. I saved enough on those to keep my family for a week. Yeah, well. Yeah, but I had to send some to my mama. I can get away with just bringing a few home here. We came up with a solution on the cabin for the rotten wood. Some of the logs, you know, are damaged. They're all like, I never measured them. They're about anywhere from, I don't know, 9 to 11 inches uh, square. We realized we could just saw them in half, and we would have plenty to rebuild the whole thing. cousin has a sawmill less than a mile away. If, we, if we're really prodigious, maybe we can talk him into bringing it over. I don't know. I, I think it's a real sawmill. I haven't seen it uh, since they set it up. It's, pro it's, it's probably not a trailer deal. We've also been able to date the house from the saw marks. Um, most of the most of the things that were not hand hewn that were sawed were sawed with an up and down bandsaw. Although there are some uh, boards on the porch that were sawed with a circular saw, and the circular saws date to like 1833. So um, you know that a lot of it was pre 1833. When you pick up this wood, man, you pick up an eight foot two by six, it weighs about twice what one of those heavy pressure treated ones that uh, Lowe's weighs. I wonder it's not rotten. Makes me sick that we didn't do this 10 years ago. Can you see that, what kind of wood it is? That's all different kinds, Dave. Whatever was on the land, I mean, there's the, the uh, primary uh, logs are made out of uh, mostly. Uh, oak and then there's lots of pine and the rafters and uh they used hickory thin sliced hickory for the nailers on the roof like uh, these big wide 15 inch uh, wide hickory boards that are about a half inch thick any uh um no, not really the poor man's house Um, Glenn. Yes, sir. Good morning, Frank. Hi. Good morning. How does um, how does Ray like his new radio? He's been pretty happy with it, man. The best radio that's ever been in the history of the world. Oh no, I mean I, I understand that. That's I get like that too. The best the the best radio I ever had is the one I have, but I just <clears throat> so he seems to like it in comparison to his five thousand. Yeah, he's he's um. He's real happy with it. I mean, I, I'd give it some thought to getting one myself, I, and, but I'm going to let him get all the settings figured out. Well, the settings, I operated at one of them at HRO. The settings are identical to the uh, 5000. Same parametric EQ and same, same, same. All the ACs are like that. The, if you got any of those ACs, duplicated the settings, you'd, be, you'd sound the same. I got you. Yeah, it sounds really good. I, you know, I think it's hard to compare them put it, until you put them side by side. But oh, but he's he's been real happy with it. That's a, I just don't quite understand the premium for that two hundred water. I mean, that, it's like twelve hundred dollars more for essentially the same radio. It has a built-in power supply. No, I, I understand. Well, it's not built in. It's it's uh, in the box, the speaker box. Oh, okay. But but still, I mean, just for a year, you're ending up with 100 more watts, but it's costing you $1,200. Yeah, 
Yeah, I understand. Well, you know, I guess that's just appeal to the macho side of us, right? Well, some people have amplifiers that are requiring quite a bit more than a 100-watt drive, too, so that, that's a selling factor. Yes, technically 48. Really here, Ernie? I think that's it. W2STR. I think it uses the same voltage as they do in the 5000. question, Frank. I've, I've always heard, I mean, I've got the 200-watt version of the 5,000. I guess they didn't make a 100-watt version of it. This is a 1,000 that you could get the field version. But, uh, you know, some say that it's better to run, run these radios at near full output than it is to run them at half output or whatever. What do you think about that? Well, uh, uh, that's been brought up before. Uh, maybe other guys have a little bit more insight than me, but some radios, a lot of the radios, the IMD is a little bit higher at lower power levels than it is at higher power levels, but usually that's the case with extremely low power levels. In other words, maybe three, four, five, six watts. I don't think that it's worse at 20 watts than it is at 100. I guess that's the downside of, like, Joe was doing there at one time when he was uh, uh, starting with low power, amping it up to 100, and then um, getting it again. I guess the whole uh, Class A thing was kind of a bust. You know, that yep. didn't last long. I used the Class A setting on this one. I guess the max output's like 75 watts. know that it makes any difference. That's class A, test one, two, three, four. And then that's regular one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. A little bit more class bite. A, one, two, three, four. Can you hear any difference at all? I think it's got a little bit more bite with it out with well, not on class A. It's a little smoother on A, but that could be just a QSB. Hey, you got a good ear too. I never ran it on Class A. I mean, I thought that was kind of a gimmick thing, uh, to be honest with you. The Dynaco amplifier runs on Class A, though. That's... <laughs> I think all the Dynacos did, didn't they, Brian? Anyway, the thing gets roar and hot, even if there's no signal going through it. Watch your amp meter on your rig, uh, Glenn, when you have it in Class A. Um, hey. Put the, put the meter on amps. Every time you key the mic, it's full amperage, whether you're talking or whether you're not. Huh. That's it. I mean, it just just uh, it thrashes the hell out of the radio. I mean, it really flogs it because it's running full tilt, even though you're not even talking. Uh, oh, well, huh. If you're on Vox, it's not a big deal because you know, your current drops to zero between your words. But if you're on Push to Talk on Class A, it's like it's like key, uh, you know, a constant carrier the whole time. Oh, I didn't realize that. Well, just turn your meter switch to amps, and you'll you'll see it right away. Instead of bouncing with your voice. It shits up and it's he's there. I see that. How's everything going up there, Ernie? I 
Right, I'm glad to hear it, man. You're sleeping the night through, and you're not, do you hear any unusual noises? It was really windy here yesterday, too, so... Well, let's uh, hang in there, man. Yeah, me and Steve said we were just going to show up one day and knock on your door. I'm just kidding, man. We were talking about it. I, was, I mean, I was, you know, if I buy, buy one of those rigs, I'm trying to think where I might get it and try to avoid sales tax, but oh well, no, no luck in Georgia. You know, it's about time for a little road trip, I and mean, I get it with gas as cheap as it is. Oh, uh, ah, never mind. bother your pets? AC4 GL. Now that I've recovered from Dave's uh, analysis, All you can do about kidney stones is pray you never get one. You can take some preventive measures, but I think some people are more prone to them than others. But they always tell you, you know, your urologist tell you drink plenty and plenty of water. Stay definitely stay hydrated and. Alcohol can cause a, a more propensity to it also. Oh, hell. I mean, you really got, you know, beer, stuff like that, and, uh, you know, the, the alcohol and the dehydration. Well, of course, alcohol dehydrates you, but, you know, I don't think it prevents it in every person, you know, but it definitely helps. I was in pretty good shape till March 15th, but alcohol causes it. I may be in trouble. It's rhubarb grits and bran cereal all have a lot of calcium. Obesity, man, I guess that causes almost everything. train. I get one of them new fancy Yesu microphones to uh, 750 bucks, Glenn. SDR QSY. $750 M1 microphones, you get that new radio. Now I'm going to stick with this fancy $469 one. Uh, $749.95 M1. Uh, what, you, what, what mic are you using now, Frank? I'm using a... Uh, an old Behringer condenser microphone. That's right. Yeah, man, I 
like that cheap Chinese one you got worked pretty well. Yeah, it works good too. <laughs> and just and it's amazing those little condenser, those little electrodes that work pretty good. I can't use it up here though because this is the remote uh, in a remote station. Thinking of you about every day, Frank, when I'm a cat this time of year. He sits at the window, looking at the birds, looking at the squirrels, looking at the lizards. And about half the time, he's, got, he's standing up with his paws on the window. Let I, him out. I want to let him out a little bit more, but as soon as I do, he picks up fleas like crazy and brings them in the house. I treat mine every month, uh, all of my cats, with the... Uh, and tick medication uh, it's very effective if you if you put that on your cat every month you wouldn't have to worry about that do you get it uh, your southern stuff I mean like at the hardware store or something oh uh, well it, it, the, play, the, the stuff that I use uh, you can get it uh, I buy it online but you you, you can get it a, a, anywhere <laughs> if you think about it sometimes shoot me an email with well, the kind you use that's a good idea. I use um, on a blunt front line is the name of it. Front line. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I buy it in bulk because I have a lot of animals, and I and I pour it in a vial, and I use an, uh, the syringe, be a two SDR, and a little bit behind the neck, uh, back of the neck, and. Extremely effective. So that's what I use on dogs. I use this thing on a cat. And the ones they sell me for a dog, they cost about you know, 15 or 20 bucks a piece. But it said that you get the big size for like 55 pounds? Yeah. Well, what I do is I have this place that I get it from. I buy like uh, six doses for the biggest dog. And I put it in, I, I empty them out and put them in a vial. I have these little syringes. It cost me about a tenth of what it would be if I bought individual cat size ones. Yeah, that's what I do with the dogs, though. So I just go buy the 30 bucks. Other states, you can get about two ounces of pure ivermectin. I just put a, you know, put a syringe full on his food once a month. And supposedly your uh, it works better if you mix it with glycerin. But I've never done that, and it's never had any issues. Mine doesn't go into food. I mean, you got to make sure it's it's okay with cats. Mine goes on the back of their neck. It doesn't go into food. Oh yeah, well this is the heartworm, Frank. I'm sorry, I, I switched on you there without saying. That's okay. what I do for heartworm. Instead of the one heartworm pill, twenty bucks. One, one vial of that, thirty dollars. It lasts the lifetime of your dog, just about. Is that the front line now? Plus, front line plus, right? So it also doesn't just treat fleas. It also treats a couple of other things like worms and stuff. Oh no, Revolution does that, I, but the, the front line does fleas and ticks, and then uh, there's another kind that does just the fleas. How come you don't use Revolution, Frank? So see, I got to get a prescription for that from the vet. Oh, you don't need that for Frontline. No, I don't need it for Frontline. And I mean, the Revolution is the better uh, thing, as you know, Brian. But I, I with, with all the pets that I have, I'd have to get a prescription for every one. And then it, it gets very expensive because you got to have a visit. Yeah. Perfect example of something in the economy that should be uh, different than what it is right there. That makes no sense at all. That's just a money gouge. You know, don't, man, I love my vets. They're two great ladies, but their business is kind of like the legal business. So a lot of things you had to used to hire, have to hire a lawyer to do that you average person didn't need a lawyer to do, and lawyers made a lot of money off of it. But. That stuff's been eliminated. The same needs to be done on stuff like that. Are they Labesians? No, 
No, they're not. Believe it or not, I, I, I suspected that for a while, but... Well, there's a couple of my cats that I do go to the vet every year for their shots and then to get exams, and I don't mind that, but I, I can't... I, I, I'm not, well, I... I not going to afford to be taking uh, 10 cats to the vet. Yeah. Oh. Who down? And my stray cat, he's even more skittish than ever now. Really? Oh, yeah, he remembers me trapping them. And they don't, they have certain things they don't let go. Damn, oh, man, that was, a, that was a one time deal there. I'll never trap them again. Hey, Brian, that's. Thing that's kind of bad at the vet. Go there and they give you some simple antibiotic that you can buy on your health insurance for three dollars. Then they charge you like thirty-five. I know that's part of their business model, and I get it. But once again, I, you know, over the long term, uh, that's probably uh, going to have to change for them. Means they just have to charge more for something else to cover their overhead. People don't understand about how businesses work. Everybody complains about the house, how much it costs if you get towed by the towing company for illegal parking, how much their storage fees are and everything. But, you know, when it comes to when you break down on the side of the road, it's pretty damn cheap. Yeah, I think a vet's overhead would be extremely high. Unfortunately, they don't have to have malpractice insurance because, you know, despite what people think of their animals, in North Carolina at least, the dent, if, they, if, they, if they kill your dog by accident, they're limited to the replacement cost, which, you know, two or three hundred bucks for a lab, as opposed to, um, you know, emotional uh, in, in distress, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, can you, uh, can you shit, uh, can you shoot uh, kitties with a, uh, a tranquilizer dart, uh, Frank? Can you shoot them? Uh, I, I have no idea. That's <laughs> never. I, I guess you could. I've never heard of it. I said that my stray cat, if you ever get sick again, I'll never be able to trap him. Um, you have to have a heart trap. I'll have to get him some other way. How close can you get to him? Well, he doesn't let me get very close anymore. I would say, I would say about maybe eight feet, is it eight, ten feet? Maybe your vet would have an idea about that. I, I'm at a loss. I know the have the regular traps. I. I don't know, uh, maybe a, a different type of trap uh, that could, uh, that it won't recognize, you know? I don't know. Yeah, when he was so sick, he hung on him with that have a heart trap. And... Oh, man, he's hit to death now. Yeah, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, of course. Maybe if you got somebody else to let him out. If you ever have to trap him again in a different way, maybe you can get somebody else to let him out. Maybe he won't associate it with you. Let him, uh, let him out. And yeah, once he was trapped, aren't you the one that let him out? No, I took the trap to the right to the vent and with him in the trap. Oh yeah, but you handled it. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, you get what I'm saying. If if you hadn't been the trapper. Might not associate you with it as much, although they probably still would. Yeah, they're, they're looking smart. As soon as mine goes out, if he ever gets out and nobody knows, uh, that there's something on the doorstep fairly quickly. Yeah, they like to, they like to show off that one. Now, I'll tell you this, he doesn't. I'm going to let him on these squirrels out here. I had to move my bird feeder for the third time. Damn things, I, it's just unbelievable. 
And it's not enough for them to eat the stuff. They have to climb on it and empty every last seed out of it. Every single one. Oh, the squirrels are eating uh, your bird, uh, bird seeds? Yeah, they're getting in my fence feeder. You know, they finally, this last place I had it, they were jumping about nine feet to land on it and, and, and catch it. been shooting them in the ass with a BB gun when they any time they're on the feeder I shoot them right in the butt. They don't have hardly any squirrels here. Yeah, that's just happening. There's a hollow tree right by where my feeder is. And I can't afford that expensive Niger and Finch food. They're eating, you know, two pounds, three pounds a day. Those cost as much as hamburger. I had this nice hickory tree where the squirrels would play all the time. The cats love to hang out there for obvious reasons. And then I had to take that tree down because my, it was going to be where my tower needed to be. And now uh, a squirrel says uh, no longer I never see a squirrel anymore. AC4GL. They were just hanging out here because of that nice hickory tree. Oh, hey, boy, you've been uh, missing there for a while. What the hell? Yeah, you, uh, you haven't been up yonder, have you? I was, uh, well, I was up on 40, uh, see if I could hear the ambo, if I could, a couple of months ago, but, uh, yeah, yesterday, I went up to the ambo. Okay. Everything getting settled in there? Uh, I'm not quite there. I'm going to go back to tomorrow, I'm going to go back to tomorrow, I'm going to go back to tomorrow. Oh, I didn't think they'd let you in. Well, I just got there. Brian, I can't hear him. Are you uh, all used barefoot, I guess? A little bit better. Uh, 
Oh boy, I do that all the time. Uh, in my my protection circuit trips. I'm surprised that that didn't work. That's a shame. That's a shame. It's not that hard to replace them, so. Oh, you you sure that it's bad? Oh, have you tested the transistors? Okay, well. Sorry to hear it. Yeah, that sucks. Getting two of them. Oh, I didn't know you had one eighty eight. I'm not not sure if that's really an upgrade. I mean, do what you want, but it'd certainly be a lot easier just to put another 188 in there. Then you're not going to have all those bias issues and everything. Yeah, I don't understand why you have to rebias it. Uh, it's a, just a different device. Uh, it's very simple just to replace one of the ones that was in there. sure it'll be okay. It's just a little bit more involved, and it's a, you had to spend the extra couple of hundred bucks. I lost one of my 188s way back when I was beta testing, and that's a, that's two or three years ago, and I, and I replaced just the 188s and never had another problem since. I just replaced one. I, I don't replace something if it's not bad. Just replaced one 188, and that's been three years ago. I used the hell out of my amplifier. For sure, it'll be fine. Separate uh, meter. I'll tell you, let me just make one comment. I, I, if I had a generator like that, I, I wouldn't want my radios coming on without me knowing about it. Now, you know, after a power failure, I want to have to reset my radios independently. Oh, yeah. If a generator comes banging on, you don't know what kind of a speak that's going to throw out. Yeah, my, my, uh, my electrician was like, now, 
He's like, you sure you want 50 amps at, at 240 uh, to this to this plug? I'm like, yep, I'm sure. He's like, that's going to cost blah, blah, blah. I have uh, my whole station. I have a dropout relay box that I build. If I lose power, I got to manually put the power back to my, my ham station, even though the power comes back on from the... Uh, the utility, I control whether it comes back on. And I, I'll tell you, if I had a generator or an automatic switch, I wouldn't want that generator to overthrow that, that voltage to my radios while they were still on. No doubt. AC4GL. W4WC. W4WC. W2S, dear. I was going to say, Garrett, now, and the good news is that you're on furlough. Now you can listen to Todd call CQ all day long. Evangelicals a bad name.
still on a missed report on that part. Yeah, I This whole thing, boy, and when you got video, he showed his video of things like that, and people immediately line up on one side or the other, that is very, very scary. It's bad enough about the press mischaracterizing a lot of it. Well, I, well, I think the press is, I mean, that's just, that's just what they do now, Brian, is that, you know, that, you know, there's no independent press. They all are either trying to uh, convince you to one way of thinking or the other. Well, you know, I, I saw that video, and my first question was, who's taking this video? It was a, it was a, neighbor, a third guy that they called and asked him to come along to see the video. Okay. It's been kind of hard to squeeze any any of the details out of that thing. Yeah, it's so herky-jerky. You, you, you'll have to look at it frame by frame to get any, you know, that's not going to do a, for an, a forensic analysis to get much out of it. I saw this guy. I, uh, I saw this guy. I don't know who it is. It was something popped up on a DC somewhere. He was wearing an Uncle Tom t-shirt. I think he's from Epic Times. I think that's where it was. And, and he was just going into all, all these questions he had about it. Who is that? Who are you talking about? I don't know what his name was. Uh, uh, it was a black guy. He had an Uncle Tom t-shirt on. And he, he went on like this, uh, it was like a 12 or 14 minute video where he was just asking a whole lot of questions about it and saying, hey, you know, it's a little too early to be convicting these guys or exonerating them. I never could track it down. I thought, well, I finally found it on YouTube. Oh. I, mean, it was, I mean, his point is exactly right. His point's exactly right. I mean, it's kind of like the O.J. trial. I mean, now his biggest point was, if you're this guy and you're and, and you're out for a job and you see the two guys standing in the street with guns. Why don't you turn around and run the other way? I mean, that guy was from standing in the back with the gun the whole time that I saw it. He had plenty of time to turn around and run. I mean, I don't know, man. I just... I see, you know, let, let's just flip it. Yeah, those guys are going to fly. I'm just like, I'm just thinking that the situation's reversed, or not even reversed, but if I'm out jogging, which of course that makes it an unbelievable story anyway, unless there's somebody behind me chasing me with a gun. If I'm out jogging and I see, I see two people standing in the street with guns, man, I'm thinking the last thing I'm going to do is run up to them and see what they're up to. Well, I don't think he did that. I think they were in the truck. All he saw was a inside the road. I mean, you, you're right about one thing. It's hard to tell perspective on that video and photographs sometimes, so I, it's unclear to me how far away he was when he had the opportunity to turn and run, but he certainly had plenty of time to turn and run before the confrontation. I 
does it? I don't know, man. Everybody thought all those cops in the OJ trial were going to fry, too. I mean, in the, uh, um, what was his name? I'm thinking of not OJ, but uh, Rodney King. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. First, they eventually got, you know, when, when the justice system didn't convict them, the federal government stepped in. Four GL, we got to go hit the showers, guys. Hey, tell me again how big a uh, conduit I got to run that uh, NC five eight through.
Why not one of these days test the uh, the Gamsa G76 uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, to put that on the air? That would be uh, uh, that, that would that would be a good thing. Um, so uh, anyway, yeah. So sorry to sorry to hear about that, um, uh, there, Andy. Um, uh, and uh, you know, Al, you know, that I think you were the one that coined. Uh, uh, the, uh, the phrase, uh, the cat from hell, uh, for my, uh, daughter's, uh, 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 really nailed it. Now, the cat has, uh, developed, uh, a mind, uh, my daughter's boyfriend's, uh, dog. And it's, uh, very friendly and affectionate to the dog, which is a gigantic um, uh, golden retriever, uh, but uh, basically uh, attacks everybody else. Uh, <laughs> it's just a, loves the dog, hates everybody else. Truly the cat from hell. Uh, let me turn it over to you, Al. Uh, WN-ZTT. This is uh, WA2-RAF. Kilowatt, two fox whiskey. Oh, I heard Joe in there, VIV, and there was another station. Yeah, K2FW, Kilowatt, two Fox Whiskey. Good morning. <coughs> Go ahead, pick it up, Joe, and pass it over to Steve. Yeah, okay. Cool,